Happy Independence, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at Kanu Bay Resort, a secret historical trove. It was once known as Kanawa Bay. Amerindian artifacts can be found here and the resort's logo was done by the late museum curator Edward Hernandez. We'll show you more of this piece of paradise right after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. The THA plans to deal with coastal erosion. Tobago's cultural ambassadors storm Suriname and a program geared at creating professional athletes. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. You're watching Let's Talk Tobago. These well-preserved Amerindian artifacts can all be found right here at Kanu Bay. In fact, between 1995 and 2005, Edward Hernandez brought both local and foreign students to the grounds to conduct archaeological digs. And speaking of digs, coastal erosion is a natural process that occurs because of currents and waves that result in the loss of sediment in some places. Tobago's coastlines are no exception, but help is on the way through a partnership we hear more on that from Davia Chambers. There was a time when Tobago had more land than sea. Now it's decreasing. There has been a dramatic increase in coastal erosion over the last two decades around the world and this is expected to continue as sea level rises and storm frequency and severity increase. But our island is making plans to deal with the problem. This meeting was to bring up the minds together on the way forward working together with the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure in Trinidad and the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities of the Tobago House of Assembly. And we will have decided that we will develop an MOU. Before further damage is done to coastlines around Tobago, Mr. Sandy wants this plan to be done in a timely manner. Because of this, it is the responsibility of the Tobago House of Assembly to ensure that, well, the coastline is protected. But coastal or engineering on coastal development is very hard to get. You can't get them much in Tobago and Trinidad. And because we have the assistance now, we will surely accept that assistance from the ministry in Trinidad and use that opportunity to sort of develop our areas in Tobago. And once the plans are developed, the execution of the work will be carried out by the Assembly. We will have to up, go towards the Ministry of Finance to get funding to go forward with the projects after we bring everything together. One area that has suffered from coastal erosion is much of the land along Milford Road and Lambeau. The Atlantic Ocean has claimed more than its fair share of the area. The Assembly sees this as an urgent problem to be fixed. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Water.org says that more than three times more people lack water than live in the United States. But here in Tobago, the Water and Sewage Authority is trying to prevent Tobago becoming part of those statistics as they carry out their means laying exercise throughout the island to increase our water supply. We have recently completed a 16-inch main from Bacolet to Signal Hill and we are seeing the benefits where the residents in Signal Hill are now, now have a 24-7 supply. Uh, earlier in the year, we completed a project from Buku, from Colon to Buku, a 16-inch pipeline. And we have in place plans to replace a main from Broad Road, Colored
And up next is the village of Mount St. George, seeing that there are leaks throughout the village since the mains are very old and due to be replaced. This means that in the next three months, Mount St. George will have a 24-7 water supply too. The first phase begins at Ferry Queen Junction and continues up to right here, Belmont Road. This begins in two weeks, but there should be no traffic hassles. The hours of work basically would be in the night from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Now, the reason for this is we have a, a lot of heavy traffic um, passing through the Andal Juni Day. Mainly because um, a heavy traffic also, we have, the, we have, have two, three asphalt, uh, asphalt plants on this side. There is two quarry, that is Study Park. We have um, one quarry and also the asphalt plant. Then we have all the traffic from Charlottesville to Goodwood, passing through John Dahl, heading down to Scarborough. Mr. Andrews says that provisions are being made for the larger vehicles that will have to pass. We understand that we have trucks and trailers, and even the buses, trucks and trailers traversing every night from the port to uh, the quarry and the, uh, the concrete plant, back and forth just before 9 o'clock, so we make special provisions for them. Um, adding to that, the, the, the buses also, we have, I think we have a late bus, um, traveling from Charlottesville, going to Charlottesville, uh, somewhere about uh, 10 or so in the night. We'll make special provisions for those and even the ambulances in case of emergency. The first phase of the mains laying exercise will last for seven weeks, while phase two will be completed in five weeks. It is Wasser's goal to have the entire island running on 24-7 water supply by the end of 2013. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. When you started high school, did you know how to handle bullying or even how to choose the right friends? Well, we all know how daunting it can be for first form students beginning a new phase of their school life. But first formers of the Mason Hall Government Secondary School got some help as they move into high school life. Omadar Mills tells us some of what the students experienced at their orientation. Adana Duncan is one of the 120 students now entering her first year at Mason Hall Government Secondary School. She says that the issues of peer pressure and bullying are topics which she now knows more about and that this will help her make a better transition into secondary school. I learned a lot about bullying. Don't bully somebody because you would not like it to happen to you and follow the right company because they could lead you astray. Another student, Jamari Small, is eager to engage in subjects such as physics and geography at his new school. He appreciates the orientation activity, which included topics such as the differences between primary and secondary schools and making wise choices when it comes to choosing friends. I think it was a good idea so you could learn like not to do stuff that you shouldn't do, so not to follow bad company. So because the future is in your book bag. The guidance counselor at the school, Eloise Saunders-Hines, says that this kind of orientation is done by the Student Support Services Unit under the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. The objective really is, is to have the first formers get the information and make the adjustments so when school officially starts, when the other children are here, they will be able to just settle in and work with the curriculum. Pentecostal Light and Life and Signal Hill Secondary are among some of the other schools to participate in the program. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. It's time to take a break, but coming up, Suriname gets a taste of Tobago. Stay with us for the details. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. About 26 years ago, this area was nothing more than a forest with rocky cliffs along the coast. That's until managers Ashton and Caroline James transformed this 15-acre slice of Cove Estate into a beachfront resort that's been the backdrop to weddings, family days, and even an MTV reality show. 
And while we're showcasing what Tobago has to offer, Tobagonian talent took center stage at the 11th Cari Festa recently held in Suriname. More than 30 cultural ambassadors showcased the island's unique food, dance and music. Here's Omadara Mills with some of what Tobago presented to their Caribbean counterparts. How we come here today to put on a show and place the Awi culture to whet your appetite and add a little flavor to make the ambience right. All you will get is a little snippet. But if you want more, come pay Awi a visit. This speech band is one of the cultural items which was presented to patrons attending Cari Festa 2013 under the theme Treasure of Cultural Reflections from Tobago with Love. Our islanders displayed Tobago's heritage with several traditional dances. The artistic director Jesse Taylor says that the contingent made Tobago proud. There was a spirit of, of um, wanting to do this, so there was this exuberance in all of them and they came with a purpose and I think that they fulfilled that. Culinary delights such as fried fish and bake are items which sold out at the cultural exposition. Music from local artists is another way in which the Tobago group left a memorable impression. Panist Gerald Balfour says that he is pleased to perform on his country's national musical instrument. One of the persons in charge of the art and craft section, Nora Trim, says that Tobago's unique designs and techniques attracted quite a bit of attention. It was very promising. People came in and they were just asking for the product. You know, some of them when we just we had just set up the, the, the table and they were coming and they were asking a lot of things about the screw pine, the pan painting, how it was done. We explained to them and they said, um, even the tie dyes. The people who were here doing tie dyes, they compare it and they said it was excellent work. It's just like to come to who would come back to buy and so forth. So they rated our work first class. It is the first time that this island was represented with such a wide range of cultural items at Cari Festa. The representation of the island's culture is seen as a way to market this destination as different from that of its sister isle, Trinidad. <laughs> Our mills for Let's Talk to Bego. The Youth Energize for Success program intended to help with job placement and training for young professionals in the private and public sectors, but it took on a different role for the school holidays. As Davia Chambers tells us, 15 secondary school students got a taste of the world of work and some guidance on how to get into the driver's seat to help diversify our economy. The world of work is very important in developing young minds. And during this July-August vacation, these young people learned a lot about work ethics and its benefits to the Tobago economy in the long run. The whole idea, the, the, the whole idea of the program is to pretty much develop a cadre of young professionals who are not just committed and focused, but who are dedicated to developing themselves and um, are mostly to diversify the Tobago economy. To ensure that they'd not just hear about economic diversification, the team ensured that the students got first-hand knowledge on how they can assist in doing so. Many Fridays, a significant part of the program was to take the interns out to different uh, projects and programs and different sites that play an influential role in diversifying the Tobago economy. For instance, they have visited Cove. Some of them had the opportunity to in intern at the Cove estate. And the students are very thankful for the entire experience. It brought me at a focus and it also gave me the driving force for my future career. I would encourage all the youths to be a part of this program. It is a very informative and beneficial one. It gave us well, practical experience in the work world and it has developed our work and life skills. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. The experience was very rewarding and by rewarding I mean on all levels in terms of being able to experience the working world because as a young individual you are not given the opportunity to work because of your age regardless of qualifications. 
so I was privileged to have that experience. The YES Employment Internship Program is already looking forward to next year's cycle. The Tobago House of Assembly is continuing to roll out initiatives to ensure employment and stability of the youth. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It will cost the Assembly about $260 million to ensure some Tobagonians can live in a comfortable townhouse, duplex or apartment complex in adventure. Construction has already begun in Plymouth and the Secretary of the Division of Settlements and Labour and his team visited the site to take in some of the development. Townhouses in Plymouth? You heard correctly. They're under the construction phase now. But soon, this phase two of the Adventure Housing Scheme will be completed townhouses for middle-income families in Tobago. But before it reaches that stage, a team from the Division of Settlements and Labour took to the area to see firsthand what's happening with the project to ensure that Tobagonians can begin to receive keys from January 2014. This section um, consists of 78 townhouses. They are all two-bedroom, one-and-a-half baths. According to the Secretary of Settlements and Labour, Huey Cadet, other zones for this housing scheme are to begin in October, pending the Assembly's budget allocation for housing developments. This project is being managed by Project Specialists Limited under the direction of the Housing Development Corporation. Five contractors from this island are hired for the project. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but on the other side, we'll tell you what it takes to become an elite athlete. Thanks for staying with us at Canoe Bay Resort where you just might be lucky enough to see fishes and turtles out on the reef. You heard it right, Canoe Bay even has a reef. The low tides are perfect for snorkeling as there is no undercurrent. And this hidden gem is a great place to explore. And while we're on the topic of hidden gems, Tobago's athletes can now excel in sports and earn a college degree at the same time. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports has a program that will help create future stars as they combine sport and education through the Tobago Elite Athlete Program. The focus is on students who have set their sights on going all the way to the top. Crystal George has more details. Attitude and aptitude are what the Tobago Elite Athlete Program TEEP is looking for. A THA team is currently in the U.S. making the links to facilitate Tobagonians for potential athletic scholarships. The elite program treats with those student athletes who have shown by their attitude and aptitude that they can be taken to the other level of preparation. The program will cover a host of disciplines. Um, there are elite programs in cricket, there are elite programs in tennis, um, table tennis, in um, basketball, in track and field. And these elite programs attempt to ensure that the athletes who have shown promise are now being given specialized attention. Strength programs, um, nutrition and diet programs, they'll also be afforded uh, uh, programs in mental preparation, right? that psychological readiness. We try to provide the exposure, that exposure for them at schools, universities in the United States. And therefore, we attempt to link these students with scholarship opportunities. 
The Assistant Secretary for Education, Youth Affairs and Sports, Jim Pitt, along with Richard McFarlane, are currently in the United States visiting universities with a view bringing awareness to the island's talent. They are going to make that kind of intervention, make the linkages with the various universities to ensure that they make personal contact and ensure that what, um, whatever who was, the athletes who are ready for uh, scholarship uh, tuition in the States, that they be afforded the opportunity to so do. Just one last step before that deal is signed, ensuring that every track is covered. In this program, helping youths my age to do the SAT classes and prepare to further themselves and go abroad. But in sportsmen can inquire Diaz for more information. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Thousands lined the seawall in Scarborough in anticipation of high seas drama for the 2013 Great Race. Unlike last year, there was a smooth finish as two-time champion Fire One was defeated. Davia Chambers tells us by whom and about some of the other winners in the competition. Here are the highlights for those of you who missed the big event. It was a cross-island trek, but not on foot, rather across some dangerous waters. The Carib Great Race 2013 ward off from the foreshore opposite Haisley Crawford Stadium in Trinidad and the Team Monster in their 46-foot skater catamaran was the first boat to dock into Scarborough winning the 45th edition of the competition in one hour and 20 minutes. For those of you who were here to see and witness the action live, let's put our hands together and give a round of applause. Esplanade, make some noise for your champions in the A-Class. Team Monster! Yes! Somebody say Monster! 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 Monster, take a wine, take a wine, take a wine, take a wine, yes. Monster, competing in the A-Class category, completed the race two minutes ahead of 17-time champion Mr. Solo, while Fire One came in third in one hour, 24 minutes. For the B-Class, Team Boom Shakalaka won and finished fourth overall in one hour and 30 minutes. Global Warmer won the C-Class category, stopping the clock at 1 hour 38 minutes. D-Class, Stinging Metal, and G-Class, The Conquerors. Meanwhile, this team was awarded for the most wins in the Carib Great Race. In all, 16 boats finished the race. Also a part of the festivities was the Miss Carib Great Race competition. Liesel King of Lambo beat out six competitors to take home the crown. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It was a day to promote Tobago's talent, and this time not culture, but drinks. How? Let's leave Davia Chambers to explain. As you can see, the Scarborough Esplanade has been transformed into a drinks village. That's because it's the 2013 Great Drinks Festival. Here, vendors are getting the opportunity to display, advertise, and offer samples of their products to the general public. Have you ever tasted Baji Punch, Buku Reef Oasis, Avocado and Banana Smoothie, or the Grasshopper? I'm sure you've never encountered some of these innovative drinks showcased at the Drinks Festival to excite our taste buds. And that, it did. Hi, do you have aloes in here? I want to ask you, do you have aloes in here? We have the Buku Reef Oasis, which is a rum-based um, drink. It's very strong, it's very punchy. And we also have um, on saying the dashin, the baji, sorry, the baji punch. We have the dashin punch. We have babadine and other punches. Today we have a pina colada smoothie and we have a banana strawberry smoothie, which that's one of our specialty. And for the competition, we have a avocado banana smoothie. What about a mint cream punch? Sure sounds familiar, but the mixture of ingredients is not, which is why this drink was the most innovative as named by the judges. The product this is exquisite mint cream, right? What it actually is is a combination 
of um, coffee, cocoa, almonds, um, milk liqueur, and rum, white rum. And that really is the main purpose of the Great Drinks Festival by the Business Development Unit, to showcase products that are unique to our island, made with the majority of ingredients from our soil and Tobago love. It was excellent, man, excellent. Um, it's good. It's um, livening up, giving out, you know, exposure and whatnot. Yeah, it's doing good. Well, it's my first time, and I really wanted to just to have an idea what it would be like for next year. I think it's a very good event to be able to market your business and to market the products and to market what Tobago has. Um, knowing very well that Tobago has a lot of very great products that can reach both local and international standards. The Great Drinks Festival also included mixology segments with various bars from across the island. This is the second year the festival has been held. I'm Davia Chambers reporting from the 2013 Great Drinks Festival for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. Trinidad and Tobago is celebrating 51 years as an independent nation. So we're asking, what does independence mean to you? This is what you said. Well, first of all, what independence means to me, well, it is the time of the year, well, it is the, it's that time in our history when we would have asserted our own, ourselves from English rule. It was also, it is also the time when we could as as a people look back on where we have come from and also look to where we intend to go in the future. While we may not be perfect, I think that we all can work together as a people to ensure that our nation becomes a better place for our children and us to enjoy. It is very important to the country and to us and even the smaller generation. Liberation and I must think about Eric Williams. In a short version, Eric Williams is responsible for our independence and I must think about him most important. Independence means everything with respect to freedom, de deciding your own destiny, you know, is, is a, independence is, is very special to every Trinidad and Tobagoans. Independence means to me is um, so to be self-sufficient. You're able to manage your affairs and to carry out yourself in a free way. Okay? Like me, I'm independent. See, I do my own thing here. I'm an independent woman. So if our country is independent, they're able to carry out their, manage their own business. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk to Bego to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holden. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you now with some more scenes from the beautiful Canoe Bay Resort.